the little we know about this figure, William Shakespeare, doesn't really fit the kind of profile that you imagine is necessary, the kind of learning that's necessary, the life experience. You know, Shakespeare never, as far as we know, went uh, very far from London or Stratford. So how would he know about Italy? How would he know about these uh, historical sources that lie behind the plays that he writes? How would he be able to imagine these extraordinary, almost science fiction scenarios in things like The Tempest? You know, where did it come from? And that mystery opens up all kinds of speculation, all kinds of passionate inquiry, and mystery that people have to plunge into and try to crack in various ways. There's an entire field of literature on Shakespearean studies concerned with who wrote Shakespeare. And of course, there have been movies out recently about it. Uh, was it Bacon? Was it Edward de Vere? Uh, did Shakespeare write them himself? Uh, could a man from his low social status have written the kinds of plays? So there's almost always been some air of mystery around the works, and at times it has grown into a really vexing problem. In fact, by 1915, a book could be published on the, wor on the question of Shakespeare's authorship called The Greatest Problem in History. It's the, it's the, the thing that everybody is, is uh, worried about at that point. And Friedman comes into this controversy via the Baconian Society. Uh, those people who believe that Bacon wrote the plays uh, formed a society, and um, there were a number of theories about what kind of code and how you read it and where it was found. Friedman never bought the idea from the beginning. He did it as a pastime. It was a hobby. They, they simply were never persuaded as, let's say, literary scientists that the methods people were using were persuasive. They simply felt that Elizabeth Wells Gallup and her successors were setting up rules for finding secret messages that were either flawed as methods or imperfect in their findings. And I think they ended up simply uh, debunking attempt after attempt after attempt. And that led ultimately to this extraordinary uh, hammer blow of a book, The Shakespearean Ciphers Examined, which was not their favorite title, and in fact it was not their title at all, by the way. They uh, didn't like the, the fact that the book was called The Shakespearean Ciphers Examined because they, Im they thought that that implied that there was a Shakespearean cipher to be examined. William and Elizabeth Friedman decided to work on this book because they had been involved with the question for so long. And he was finally retired from the government. And so they could dedicate full time to these other little projects, none of which had anything to do with their government work. Well, he wrote a book on it because there had been 30 years of correspondence with these people and many, many books written about it, and he came out with the def what I consider the definitive work, saying there is no cipher. These things are all subjective, and this should be the end of the story. Did this stop people from writing to him? No. 